Thank you for the opportunity to speak here at the AIC. Uh, it's a great uh, a thrill actually to be here uh, at an institution that has such a great uh, reputation and uh, I'm sure everyone in the uh, Institute must have been uh, very pleased with the recent coverage in the Sydney Morning Herald which I think painted the Institute in a, in a very, positive, uh, very positive way and shows the great range of work that's done here. So, uh, so thank you very much for that. Um, I've entitled, um, sorry, I'm going to get the technology right. Uh, I've entitled uh, this, the presentation Juvenile Justice, A Wicked Problem, and I've not chosen that title because it's cute. Uh, I've chosen that because I think it's actually a very apt description of what faces people who work in the juvenile justice area. Um, and when we look at what a wicked problem is, or that common definition, and um, I'm sure you've all had a look at it on Wikipedia, which is where we all seem to get so much of our, uh, our information from these days, and I must admit this is where I've taken my definition from, um, it's hard to define. And it's interesting in our review, and I'll talk a little bit about uh, this aspect of it, is that everybody had a different perspective on it, um, and actually what it means and what it means for people that are working in the area and for those that are caught up in it. It has a changing nature and I'm sure that those of you involved in the field will have noticed that changing nature of, of juvenile justice, not just the, the offending behaviours but how it's perceived by the community and perhaps more importantly by politicians. Um, it can never truly be solved and uh, we'll talk about <coughs> that nature as well. Um, kids will always offend in one way or another. Uh, and so it's always going to be with us. The question is how do we deal with it as a community? And as I perhaps touched on, a range of disparate stakeholder views. Uh, uh, we've uh, had a vast range of uh, views on this and so I think that all of these, uh, these factors of, of a wicked problem describe uh, or make, make juvenile justice a wicked problem. Um, but what do we do about that? And that's what our report was about, in fact, about how New South Wales might do something about it, and I think it po uh, provides pointers for the, for the rest of Australia on this. So to help answer that, there's a couple of things I'd like to do, is probably just quickly talk about Noetic and why we were asked to do it. Um, what we did and what we found in the review, and uh, there's a copy of the review over there, it's uh, quite a large uh, document and I'll only be skimming over the top of it. Um, but I will talk about the evidence base because this is uh, the, the nature of the audience here. I think that it's worth exploring somewhat in uh, a little bit about the evidence base that we built for our review. And then finally, I'd like to talk about the strategies that we suggested in that uh, the report. Um, I'm happy to say that we are able to, to talk about um, the report in some detail because it is a publicly released document and I uh, must give credit to the New South Wales Government firstly for commissioning the review and then secondly for agreeing to release it publicly. Uh, as I'm sure you're aware, many reports end up as cabinet conference and never see the light of day. Uh, so the New South Wales Government should be roundly congratulated for that. Um, so the company, Noetic, and I think Kelly talked a little bit about what we do, but we understand government and we understand the issues of, that it faces. <coughs> government has lots of wicked problems. Uh, this is one of many that our company gets involved with. Uh, we're a small company, only about 35 people across Australia and the US, Australian owned and operated. Um, and I think as a small company, we have the freedom to be able to actually say what we see and, um, and think, uh, perhaps unlike some of our competitors who are constrained by the need to feed a large machine. Um, and I think that's why we were selected to undertake this review. And as you'll see from those that have read the review, it is very um, frank and the advice that we've given there is quite fearless. Um, in setting the framework and the context for the, the review, we asked two questions, and I think they were important questions to ask, although they might seem glib and self-evident, the answer is self-evident, uh, but we thought it was important to put them up front, and uh, that's why I'm going to put them up here now, because I think they are important questions to answer, or to ask and answer. And the first one, are children and young people important? Uh, most people would say, well, of course they are. But it's difficult to actually then get some people to, to actually uh, unpack that, to, to get an answer that is uh, um, uh, more fulsome. 
And in the report, we came up with two things. Well, firstly, they're about the future. The children are about the future. They, they're the next generation, and most people get that. The second is a bit more of a hard-edged answer, and that is, uh, in Australia in particular, children are becoming more important, and the intergenerational report points quite strongly to this. Um, People of my age uh, will be retiring in the next 10 to 15 years and there's going to be a lot more of us. And there are going to be fewer young people to support that, to, to keep the country going and to provide for my, hopefully my very uh, uh, fulsome retirement. So we can't let kids and young people slip through the net and become unproductive members of society and in fact a burden on society. The second question is, are they different to adults? Again, uh, you know, people think, well, of course they are. And in fact, the answer to that is very simple. They are very different. The, the trouble with that is that in the juvenile justice and law enforcement areas, it seems that we are tending to mistake, or lawmakers either um, directly or indirectly, mistaking children for being little adults. So laws that often are applied to to adults are catching children up with very uh, poor consequences. And in fact, um, I've described in a number of discussions that actually kids have become collateral damage in the broader law and order debate. And I think that that's something to bear in mind when, when we discuss this, this issue um, across Australia and not just in New South Wales. Okay, so the review, what, what did we do? Well, it took us seven months uh, to, to get through. Um, the, uh, the project grew as the number of stakeholders grew um, and uh, as, as the scope of it was widened. Uh, I had a team of five working on it, which I led, and uh, this is certainly no way a one-person reflection on the issue. Uh, we spoke with uh, people from academia, from government, uh, and that was all jurisdictions in, in Australasia. Uh, in New South Wales, we spoke with every department or agency that had an interest in, in, the, in the field, and we spoke with uh, non-government organisations uh, directly involved in it, and uh, a whole range of other people that were suggested by either the department or the minister. Um, so that turned out to be about 105 um, stakeholders. We also ran a, a focus group with some young people who were caught up in the, in the justice, juvenile justice system. Uh, it was interesting because I had planned not to do that because we saw that this was a whole of government strategic review and uh, uh, the kids were, were separate to it. But uh, I was convinced by both my team and an academic that we spoke to that you should and it was vastly illuminating, I must say. Um, and I might just to say, why didn't we want to get involved in that? Because this was an evidence-based review. Um, anecdotes were discarded, and obviously something coming from a kid is a, or something that's caught up is an, is an anecdote. Uh, but it was, as I said, very interesting.